Um, so I'm Lee Harrison. I'm going to be talking about uh, um, a, a DFT product for um, two and a half and three D designs uh, called Multi Die. Um, but first off, why why two and a half D? Why three D? Um, what are they? Why is it the the hot topic at the moment? Um, so what we're seeing in the industry is um, to continue that strive to meet Moore's law, um, we're seeing the the need to go um, to a multi die strategy. So many of the designs out there today are, are reaching the point of um, being reticle size. So the only way we can continue to um, increase the capacity is to to move and put more than one die in in a package. Um, the other benefits of this are not only are we able to um, add more and more logic in a single package, um, but it also increases the, the overall yield because you're able to reduce the size of the die down from, from being at the reticle size, um, which actually improves the, the overall yield at a, at a die limit. Um, and, and it speeds up that, that time to market. Um, so there's a number of challenges when we start doing um, multi-die designs. Um, first of all, um, really, how do we get the access to the test? So with a regular die in a regular package, um, it's reasonably straightforward. We have access to the, um, the various pads and pins in the, on, the, on the die through the, um, the, the pins on the package. However, once we start stacking those die, um, we lose the ability to have direct access to anything other than the, um, the actual base die itself. Um, then, obviously, for each of the die, there's a set of patterns. Um, so we need to be able to actively retarget those patterns um, to the actual um, package pins itself. Um, and then, on top of the regular faults that you see at a, at a die level, we now introduce a whole range of new potential defects um, where we're actually connecting the dies together. So the potential faults that are going to occur whilst, um, whilst stacking the actual um, die on, on each other. So I also just wanted to share um, some thoughts on the different types of multi-die devices that we see. And you probably hear various terminology around uh, 2.5D, 3D, um, so essentially, when we talk about two and a half D, um, what we essentially have is a, a package which is a uh, a single interposer, um, and then the various die are um, bonded onto that interposer, and the connectivity between those die are uh, is made through the actual package itself. Um, and that's at the moment that seems to be the most common approach to these multi die. Type designs. Then we talk about 3D. This is where we actually um, we actually stack the die on top of each other. So uh, the connectivity is not no longer just to the the package and the interposer itself, um, but actually through the actual um, through the actual silicon die. So you have um, the through the through silicon connections. Um, so you could potentially stack multiple die on top of each other. Um, and then we have what we call potentially five and a half D, um, which is where you have a combination of the, the two things. So you have um, a, uh, an interposer where you have multiple die, uh, but at the same time, you could also have um, die that are stacked one on top of each other. Um, so at the same time as pulling all of these different um, configurations together, what we like to do is stay completely compliant with the various standards that are out there um, for, for DFT and test. Um, so you have the, the original 1149.1 standard, which defines the, the JTAG interface where you connect to the device and drive your, your test content um, onto the device. Um, we have uh, standards around IEEE 1500 and IEEE 1687, which define the um, internal connection and the 
um, the internal JTAG structures within the device. Um, and then more recently, we have introduced the, the IEEE 1838 standard, um, which really takes things to the next level and defines all of the additional capabilities that are needed to be able to test um, across these stack devices. So as I, so as I said, the, um, the product that we introduced last year uh, is called Tessent Multi-Die. Um, <clears throat> and what Tessent Multi-Die is doing essentially is, is automating the process of generating all of the required IP to be able to do multi-tie testing. Um, it helps with the connectivity, the pattern generation, uh, and the overall management and retargeting of the, uh, the various patterns that you have for the, the different die that you have within your package. Um, if we take a look at the standards, as I said, you've got the 1149.1 JTAG standard, which really defines the test access at the boundary level. Uh, we've got 1687, which then defines the internal connectivity and the um, internal JTAG structures. Um, so where you have multiple IP and multiple cores on a single die, <clears throat> how they're tested and how they're connected. Um, and then we move on to the new standard, which is the um, IEEE 1838, um, which defines the additional capabilities that are required um, to be able to test between the dies themselves. So, and essentially what, what's happened is all of the test infrastructure as it stands today pretty much stays the same um, with the addition of um, two extra pieces of IP. We have what we call a, um, a PTAP and an STAP. Um, so they're two slightly modified TAP controllers um, which essentially allow and enable the, um, the connectivity uh, uh, between the actual dies themselves. And in addition to the, uh, the JTAG infrastructure and the iJTAG infrastructure um, on chip and between the die, um, we've also got the uh, optional ability to have what we call a, um, an FPP, which is a fast parallel um, uh, a fast parallel port, um, which is the uh, ability to have a connectivity between the die to allow high speed data streaming between the, the die for the different, um, the different test patterns. And, and this is critically important if you want to be able to test um, at, at a reasonable speed and be able to deliver the test pattern content um, across the die as you would do on a, on a single die type device. So, as I said, um, all the IJ tag connectivity um, is there within the die itself. Um, and when you start looking at the, the 1838 standard, um, the additional things that we need are the, the STAP, the PTAP, and the FPP. That then enables you to um, really easily retarget the patterns and all of the configuration um, between the die, whether they're, they're stacked or whether they're in a 2.5D configuration. Um, so when we start putting all this together, um, this, is what we, this is what it looks like. Um, we have the, the P-TAP, which in essence is a, is a regular TAP controller um, with just a, an additional port that's been added to support the, the S-TAP. Um, and then the S-TAP the S is the, the TAP controller that does the, uh, provides the connectivity between um, the various the various dies. So when we look at the P-TAP configuration, uh, as I said, it, it's essentially a regular TAP controller um, with just a, an additional port to support S-TAP. So what we see on the PTAP is a, an additional six signals. Um, and then in the STAP itself, um, what we have there is basically a, uh, an additional bypass register um, so that when we're testing um, different dyes, we essentially have a, um, a through path um, between the actual dyes itself. So if you're, if you're testing, say, um, die number three, um, then 
you're basically utilizing the the bypass pass through the um, the S tap on on die number two. Um, the structure of the S tap, as I said, is is basically just a um, it's the ability to do a um, uh, uh, a bypass through a, a, a JTAG bypass through the actual uh, tap on the die itself. Um, and then the one thing that 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 is kind of consistent between the dies um, is your overall ATPG test structure. So um, from a testing perspective, um, we highly recommend using our, our SSN, our streaming scan network, um, which is a um, essentially a, uh, a bus-based delivery mechanism for packetized tests. Um, at a die level, we're essentially connecting all of the uh, the different blocks within the design um, through a, uh, a single test bus. Um, and then one of the advantages of that is that when you move to the, the multi-die devices, um, what we can actually do is you can use that SSN bus as your fast parallel port. So, um, so essentially there's very little change you need to do for your your overall DFT strategy, because if you're developing your die using SSN, um, then when it comes to plugging the die together in a single package, whether it's two and a half D or three D, um, then the SSN bus is essentially used as that fast parallel port um, that routes the test patterns between the various die. And so if you're, if you're looking at two and a half D, um, we can do all of the same uh, tests as you would do um, with a single die. Uh, we're able to do your the at speed capture between the die, um, and because we're we're able to use the the multi die product to retarget the patterns, um, you're able to generate the patterns at a die level, uh, and then you're able to retarget those back up to the um, the overall package. So, importantly, a multi die device is essentially fully IEEE 1149.1 compliant, uh, making sure that at a device level um, we have the full support for boundary scan um, and all of the, uh, the the regular features that you would expect with with regular JTAG. Um, and then the other considerations to, to think about when you're looking at multi-tied devices are, um, as well as the ATPG testing, also memory based. So memory based repair, whether you keep the repair at a die level or whether you're, you're able to uh, extricate that up to the, the chip level. Um, and then um, the clocking architecture as well. So um, the, the, the clocking is, is handled as you would do normally at a, at a die level. Um, and then, as I said before, uh, the test content is, is fully reusable. So, as I said, the memory best repair um, uses the same regular um, single die memory best strategy. Um, all of the tests are run um, and configured through regular IJ tag. Um, and because you're now connecting your IJ tag through the, um, the 1838 infrastructure, um, there's no change at all as to how you implement your, um, your memory best at a, at a die level. Um, and the same, as I said, for uh, the logic test, um, implementation of scan test, exactly the same using test compressed SSN. The only additional thing that we have with, um, with multi-die is with a regular configuration, you would have um, essentially two modes. You would have your internal mode, which is testing the, the internals of each core. Um, and then you would have um, an external mode, which is essentially the rest of the top level die test. Um, but now we're doing um, multi-die 
um, we have an extra mode which is um, the connectivity between the dies. So you have your um, your internal mode, which is internal to the actual cores. You have the external core mode, which is essentially um, testing the interconnect to the die level. And then, like I said, the third mode, which is um, uh, all, of, all of the tests that are, are needed to test between the two dies themselves. So in terms of reuse, as I said, uh, whether it's soft IP, hard IP, um, we generate test patterns at a core level, um, so they can be retargeted at a, at, to the top level of the die, um, and they can also be retargeted to the overall um, top level of the, the chip itself. Um, and then we start looking at the various die-to-die -die standards. So we talked about the, um, the FPP, the fast parallel, um, the fast parallel bus, uh, which is um, in most cases can be SSN, um, but you may find yourself in a situation where you're mixing and matching dies between um, different test infrastructures. Um, and if you start looking at what's coming in the world of chiplets, um, we see things like the UCIE um, as a, a universal interface. Um, and then if you're looking at various memories, you could end up seeing things like um, HBM. Uh, and various other. So um, in terms of support, uh, we've got full support for the various um, the various um, a chip to, chiplet to chiplet interfaces that are emerging out on the market. So in summary, um, using the test molded eye product really bundles together all of the existing pre-proven DFT infrastructure that we have within the test. And, um, We've got the um, obviously full support of memory based by JTAG SSN. Um, and really, Moly Die is just adding an additional um, level of hierarchy to the overall test infrastructure. So, if you're already using Tessent um, to, to implement your, your DFT infrastructure, then moving that extra step to, to Moly Die is, is reasonably straightforward. And in terms of the, the product features, um, as I said before, with the multi die product, what we're doing is essentially enabling you to, um, to create the additional IP that's required for multi die, um, being able to do the, uh, the more advanced uh, pattern retargeting um, and full support for um, uh, boundary scan. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, have a good evening.